supporting you in your dog parenting journey. The Dynamic Dog Owner with Debbie Potter. Hello and welcome to The Dynamic Dog Owner. This week we are joined by a guest, Sandy Powner from Sandy Powner Photography. She specialises in pet photography, so taking photos of pets and nothing else and to create happy memories for pet owners. Um, hello, Sandy. Hello. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you very much for joining us. We're looking forward to hearing more about what you do um, and a little bit more about your job and how the life of a dog photographer. Um, so to start off with, we just going to ask some questions, have a little chat um, and see where the conversation takes us. So have you always been a pet photographer? How long have you been doing it for? Oh, no, I've been doing it about, I think we're coming up about six or seven years now, actually. Uh, six years, I think. And um, no, I was kind of bullied into it, I always say. Um, <laughs> we did photography for a long time, and it was very much a hobby. And um, I then joined the Guild of Photographers because I wanted to start entering photographic competitions and they had a really good um it's called the image of the month competition um which I like um I won't go into it too much but I liked the competition because it seemed a very fair competition because each image is judged on its own merit through a lot of competitions you enter it's like you're judging a macro against a pet shot against a portrait and saying which is better and they're completely different genres so you know they're quite it's like apples and oranges okay i'm um, trying to compare them. um so i joined the guild because i wanted to enter the competition at a co their competition and then um they advertised the dog photography workshop i thought that sounds fun you know go and go and play with some dogs for a weekend fabulous and uh that was that really and then I was sort of my friend Kate, or well, our friend Kate, sort of uh, said, you know, you should do this as a business. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. Um, so what did you do before you were a pet photographer? Things seem I don't know, right, I feel like something completely different. Well, I, I, well, I still do it now because um, Nigel, my husband, and I have a travel business, Toach Holiday. Um, so I have two businesses with keeps me nice and busy i imagine it does one's enough thank you <laughs> so what made you specialize in dogs obviously other than seeing a workshop come up i think well that's interesting what why pick dogs as a as a niche well i mean really it's any excuse for puppy cuddle if i want to <laughs> i understand that. I, mean, I, I get that <laughs> Well, it, I mean, it's it's what I really enjoy. You know, I much prefer dogs to humans, as I'm sure many of us do. Um, so, and it's great. I mean, you get to be creative. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a really great feeling when somebody, like a dog owner, gets their images and absolutely say, yeah, you've captured my dog. You know, that's their character, absolutely, which is great. I assume, well, obviously, you said you, know, you prefer dogs to people. I, I get that. Um, dogs are very um, unconditional and very innocent. Um, surely photographing, photography, um, photographing dogs is a lot harder than humans because, obviously, with a dog, you can't say, stand there, look this way, smile at the camera. But surely it's much more of a challenging role than human photography. Would you say? Oh, yeah. I mean, it can, it can be. I don't know if challenging is the right word. Um, it's different. Um, yes, obviously, with humans, you can explain why this is happening. For a dog, what is this weird person doing with this random thing pointed at me, laying on the floor, looking very strange? I don't understand why we're not having a walk like we normally do. Um, you know, why, why are we stopping? What's going on? you know yeah it's completely weird for dogs it's i always say to people you know don't expect your dog to get this immediately because they have no clue why today is different to any other day um but you know the most important skill about it is patience you know okay. 
your dog dogs will get it they will they will in fact it's amazing how quickly they grasp the whole sit click treat scenario <laughs> we know they're quick learners yeah. oh yes so they get it they get it you just got to be patient and just let them kind of suss it out in their own time and go oh no, okay we're doing this today right okay cool more treats yay brilliant so where do your photo shoots take place? Do you always do them outside? Is it in a studio? Do you do a mix? Mix, mix. Um, I don't have a studio myself, so any um, studio style shots that you might see on my website are generally either taken in the person's home or, um, you know, venues. So like we've done some shoots at the bar um, or village halls, that kind of thing. Um so there, I mean, I basically say to people, it's like I'm moving in, but the good news is I take it all away with me. Yeah. <laughs> and they probably have to move their sofas and find out what junk is underneath it. Yeah, things like that. I mean, I have photographed in one house was particularly cozy and I was sitting under the dining table to get enough space <laughs> to take the photos. So that was quite fun. The uh, which do you doing prefer? Sort of outside. So, which do I prefer? <laughs> I like them both. I like outside. You get to be a bit more um, flexi- flexible with the settings and things like that. Um, but I like I like studio style as well. So do you, what kind of, let me say real life, so what kind of outdoor places do you go to? Is it public places? Do you hire private spaces? How does that work? Because surely you've then got to manage the public as well. Yeah. So um, it depends on what type of session somebody's books as well. So, sorry, my chair's rolling. Like we just moved. Um, so some of the sessions I run, um, I do on set dates. They're like publicly advertised, my lowest end products, as it were. Um, they tend to be at country park that I know. Um, so I, they're quite, they're a time limited session. It's about 45 minutes to an hour. So I know where we're going to find a good tree or, you know, a good footpath and that kind of thing. If you know what I mean. So you scour the place. So I know the good shot place. Yeah. The places I've photographed or Yeah. I've photographed there before. So I know where to go to get the shot and where to avoid as many people as possible. Um, that's a key point. I imagine. It can be. I mean, I tend that kind of session I don't do at the weekend because it's just, you know, lots of people come out on the weekend. So they tend to be quieter in the week. Um, But, yeah, I mean, we've hired private spaces before. Um, You know, if you can find a nice, pretty dog walking field. um, Yeah, that works. I suppose you have a dog to worry about leads and things so you can let your dog off properly. You haven't got to worry about where they're going to go or people coming in your space. Yeah, absolutely. And then depending on the session type, um, for example, if it's like a um, Rainbow Bridge session, for example, so, you know, when that is imminent, shall we say, um, I'm it's more likely to take place at someone's home. So it might just be a case of going into the garden. Okay. Um, now, obviously, with that kind of thing, it's a little bit of a trade-off because obviously at the end of end of life, then the dog is nest, not necessarily in the greatest of health. You kind of have to trade. You're not necessarily going to get the perfect shot, so you're going to get the shots that you're going to want that are going to create the memories. I suppose that's kind of what you, you deliver. I mean, why do people have photos of pets? You know, most Some people would look at you and go, well, why do I need a professional photo of my pet? But as you said, you're creating memories and those memories will last for, forever. We all know how quickly the puppy phase goes by and you forget how small they were. So do you do all ages yeah. of puppy, of dogs, from like puppies through to the end end of life or is oh. there sort of and is there a stage that's easier? Yeah. Um, no, not really. <laughs> Each has its own challenges. 
But yeah, they do. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, from the puppy end, you look at puppies. Okay, they've not had a lot of training, and a lot. Of, I think that puts a lot of people off. Actually, a, a real proper puppy shoot. Because they think, oh, my dog's not going to behave. They're going to pee on the backdrop. They're going to chew the photographer. Um, that's all happened before. Don't worry about it. I'm used to it, you know. Absolutely sorry. Um, but those mem- they're not coming back, those memories. You know, if you don't capture those those early puppy days, you're not getting them again. No. Uh, because as you say, they grow so quickly. You know, even even when you look, so I, I do a puppy package that sort of it's puppy's first year, you get three shoots in the in the year. Oh nice. And the, the changes between each stage are huge. They're, yeah, especially if you've got a big breed. Not so much if you've got a smaller breed, because they tend to grow what and reach their full size quicker. But your bigger breeds are obviously I have retrievers. So from that tiny little eight week old puppy to a year old, they have quadrupled in well, size. And it's hard to remember what they looked like. Yeah. Even like, so the first session, so the puppy puppy session in that, I normally say between 10 and 16 weeks, is sort of okay. depending on what, when puppy comes home or when people get around. But the difference between photographing a 10 week old puppy and a 16 week old puppy, even that is massive. I imagine they're a bit bouncier come 16 weeks as well. Yeah, but even the size, you know, they've su- suddenly started getting these long legs and, and things. Well, as you say, particularly with the big breed, but you know, I know we we did your Fred was fourteen weeks when we photographed him, and he was still puppy puppy, but you could see him starting to elongate, it's leggy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. We did I think, when we, when we about nine and a half weeks, and he was this tiny little scrap, wasn't it? So do you get to be create quite creative? Do you lead the photo shoot or do you do you have certain ideas you like to sort of put into play or do the owners come to you with a, this is what I'd like my images to be? Do you lead them in what the photo shoot can look like? Um, it's a bit of both. And again, it kind of depends on the session. Um, you know, a fully, so I offer a spectrum of sessions. Um, a fully bespoke session can be completely and utterly tailored. Um, if people have ideas to locations or things they want to do, provided it's safe to the dog, then I am up for trying anything new. That's cool. Um, the lower end sessions, because they're set locations to iTunes, you're a bit more limited into what you can do. But I'll always ask, you know, is there a particular shot you want to capture, a particular look, or a certain breed? have characteristics like um, Rhodesian Ridgebacks, for example, have the ridge down the back. So do you want to capture that? Is that sort of thing? Um, or, so, you know, it, there is a questionnaire that my clients fill in. They can, um, and one of the questions, what's your aim? What is there one shot you want to achieve? So as far as possible. they probably don't um, send a few sort of things from Pinterest or Instagram of, I've seen this shot, can you recreate it? Absolutely. Is that always yeah. possible? I'm providing, or is yeah. that quite a challenge? <laughs> it does depend. I mean, on the whole, I would say, provided it is safe to the dog, then yet it's very will try and create it. And that is something that people often don't necessarily realise if you've seen stuff on the internet. You don't realise that it might be Photoshop. Very true. Um, a lot of things are Photoshop. Uh, and it's so easy I would to add any line into things what? these days. Yeah. Yeah. It, a good example of this, and it's not dog, but you'll know what I mean. Have you ever seen the, the photos of newborn babies where they're like like a little frog with the little legs? Yeah. You've probably not seen them, but it's called a froggy pose. Um, Photoshop. Absolutely Photoshop. Oh, wow. Um, because it's not, it's not safe to put a baby in that position because you have to sort the head and, and this, that, and the other. But people look at it and they think, oh, you know, we just do that. So you dialing on an interesting topic. Work. Do you use Photoshop editing, etc., AI in your photos or are they 100% natural? I, 
no, no such thing as a hundred percent natural photo. Um, and I say that not in a, in a, um, you know, everything's fake way. Photoshop is basically the dark room. It is, you know, a hundred years ago, you had dark room chemicals and people were dodging and burning. Um, if you look, you can find pictures of like Ansel Adams, who was a very famous landscape photographer, um, with all his editing notes about his photos and how he's edited this and edited that and stitching negatives together and things like that. This is all editing. It's no different now. It's just we now do it on a computer. Instead, of the more room. Modern, there's a lot more possibilities. There is, but in in basics, actually, we're still doing the same stuff, really, as they were doing back then. Okay. Okay. Basically, we're doing a bit more about it. Yeah, it looks just happen. a progression of the technology. But yeah, which we all are aware of, and you know, the fact that we can do this a few hundred, well, I don't know how many miles away we are, hundred miles away, maybe. And that shows us how technology works. Yeah. Um, so on a standard photo shoot for you, obviously, I suppose people, I mean, would question, well, what's the value in it? You know, we pay her how much money to come along for, to do a 15-minute shoot. How much editing do you then have to do afterwards? Does that take quite a while? What kind of process do you have to go through to edit the photos? Depends on the shoot. Um, different shoots, obviously like studio will will be a lot more editing because dogs don't keep my backdrop nice and sweet. <laughs> That's how inconvenient. And we all get loads of them and we get lots and lots of wrinkles, which I then have to sit in Photoshop. Oh, wow. And get rid of. Um, so that's fun. Um, and black dogs really do show the dandruff. Uh, yeah, I can vouch for that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah my really right. So there's a lot of spots on it. And, yeah. Yeah, it sounds crazy, but there is a lot more editing on a black dog than there is on any other colour of dog because they just show up the duff. Oh. So um, that tastes good. Cool. But generally, on a on a shoot, probably a relatively basic edit of, say, I don't know, 10 photos is probably going to take me two to three hours minimum. Oh, wow. And that's just editing out fluff and creases and... Yeah, no, that, that, that's not... It might include the occasional head swap and that kind of thing, but it's nothing major. So you can swap a head from one dog to another? Yeah, because sometimes when you're photographing a dog and it comes back to like them not understanding um, why we're doing what we're doing. So sometimes um, you might have the dog in the perfect pose, but he's blinking. Or, right. you know, everything's right about the body, but his head is looking the wrong way or... So, so, you know, if you've got a good head on one shot and a good body on another, we do a little better. You know, that sounds incredibly technical. Actually, it's not. It's not as, it's not as technical as it sounds. I wouldn't know where to you start. Know. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's not technical on the basis that they're in this. It's like consecutive frames, if you know what I mean. So they're in the same sh background. Right, and it's just I've taken two. One's looking one way, and one's looking the other. So that's a relatively easy head swap. And I suppose um, that's quite a lot of behind the scenes. But when you know, when someone comes from a photo shoot and they get presented with this wonderful image, they may not be aware of all this behind the scenes work that goes into oh, that image. Yeah, and, absolutely. And that's that's the that's how it should be, really, because you shouldn't be able to see what's been done. Okay. So, do you always get the shot? Um, yes, yes, to a degree. Okay, that'll be cool. I, I qualify that because it, you know, <laughs> yes, we'll always. I mean, I've never come away from a shoot without anything. Okay, but but it. It's not as equivocal as being able to say, yes, I will absolutely get the perfect image for you every time. Because so much depends on how the dog settles, you know, whether the dog copes well in a photo shoot environment, because not every dog does. Um, and it's something I'm very conscious of is how the, how relaxed the dog is, how their body language, um, is shown because you don't want a photo of your dog looking stressed. 
No, absolutely uh, not. So, so yes, we'll get shots. They may not be perfect. They will be reflective of your dog having a good time and enjoying the thing. They're not going to be photos of your dog looking stressed. I'm li- I am so conscious of dogs looking stressed in photos because I've seen so many of them. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Guys. And I think yeah, that's kind of um, language. obviously most people would be unaware of that. I know yourself; you're qualified in in kind of body language, um, which well, I suppose is quite a unique thing for a dog photographer. I'm not sure if that's quite common in the industry, um, but if you're well, not. Many people aren't aware of stress signs and look dog. You know what a stress dog looks like. Your, your, your Joe blogs won't necessarily pick up on the same things that you would, and certainly I would, and go, "Oh, that dog doesn't look happy in that photo." Um, so that that really matters to you. So that you're delivering a really good service and you're delivering the best image. Do owners notice? Do they do they see it in the photos? Um, anybody that understands body language will see it. Okay. I tell you, it ruins you. It ruins you for photographs knowing about body language. It's a bit like me, uh, I mean, I'm down the street there and criticize, not criticizing, and like analysis, the analysis, running an analysis of dogs and going, oh, that dog's looking like this, that dog's looking like that. You can't look at things in the same light when yeah. you know certain information. No. no. And I've seen, um, Images that have won awards that I'm looking at and going, I don't look entirely happy about that. And it's not, it's not to the point that the dog looks terrified, but it's to the point where you're thinking that dog's not comfortable. And I suppose the people that are judging their awards, again, aren't aware. They're looking at the quality of the image no. rather than the subject of the image. Absolutely. They're not, they're not trained in dog body language, which is, you know, it's probably not really within the remit of a photographer, a general photographer. If that's fair to say, yeah. Um, but I do think it's, in, if you're specialising in dog photography, I do think that it is really something that you should be making yourself aware of. Because yeah, absolutely. If, you know, you're capturing memories for people, as you as said earlier. It, it's something that is going to last much longer than the time your dog spends with you without being too morbid about it so if you're capturing those memories that are gonna they're gonna last forever do you really want to capture the memory of the dog not looking happy yeah or looking uncomfortable or looking stressed you know and I suppose you don't you want to you want your dog happy Equally, it means when they're in the photo session, you can monitor how they're feeling, when they need a break. Because it is quite an intense Absolutely. experience for them. Um, and I suppose it avoids any problems with the dogs getting overstressed, not posing, etc. If you can say, oh, actually, they're looking like they need a break now. Yeah. And added bonus to a photo shoot, your dog will sleep the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, good mental stimulation for sure. Lots of concentrating. Oh, yeah. So are some dogs yeah. more natural at photo shoots than others? Do some just naturally go, there's a camera, let me pose, whereas others may shy away? A lot of people will say to me, oh, I'll get a camera up, my dog runs a mile. Do you have dogs like that in photo shoots? Do you have the ones, like one of mine will just stand in front of the camera posing as if he is on a model shoot. Um, do you have... Yeah. Do you see a lot of that or is that just that you know what you're doing? I suppose when people are taking a picture of their dog, they're trying to pose their dog, walk away, get their camera out and do yeah. all of it. Whereas when you're taking a picture, all they've got to worry about is the dog. Yeah. And one of the one of the the simplest things that anybody can make life easier for themselves if they're trying to take pictures of their dog is teach your dog to sit and wait while you walk away. Yeah, if that makes perfect sense. Yeah. If you try and get them to do it, try and get them to do it the first time on the photo shoot. This is not going to work because your dog is just going to go. I always sit at your feet, and then you give me a tree. And what on earth are you doing going over there? You know, dog does not understand this. I suppose the only caveat yeah, is that you've got people in the shoot as well, and they want pictures of themselves and the dog. But but yeah, most people want it if the dog on its own. 
Yeah, I mean, some sometimes the dog literally will not move away from their own estate. And you know, even if the dog has to stay on a lean, yeah, even if the dog has to stay on a lean, you know, being able to step two paces away makes my life a lot easier in terms of editing. So that you can edit out of the house and have your own set. Oh, yeah, so I can do that, bro. It, it's a lot. Don't go on, carry on. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I said, that brings it on to like, top It's a lot easier than the gap. Separate the people and the dog, yeah. So what would you say are, you know, if people are looking at having a photo shoot with their dog, you said obviously a sit stay is crucial. What else is sort of an important skill for dogs and their owners to have before they come to you? Obviously regarding puppies, because puppies will just sit and sleep and do what they need to do. Um, I mean, the sit and wait is a really big thing. If we can get that, most things will follow. The the focus thing, if they can focus on their owner, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. It is okay. absolutely wonderful. But it's as long as the owner can walk and stand directly behind me. Right? Because, like, I mean, you know what Rem's like. He will just follow you. But if I make noises, Rem will ignore so, like, gun dogs generally ignore noises because they've been taught to ignore and have a good focus. Yeah. Yeah. What? yeah. Whereas pet owner, pet dogs, if I make a noise, they're like, oh, what was that? You know, you get that look. Gun dog owners know you need the focus. So, um, yeah. But it's patience. A lot of it is patience. And just don't get stressed yourself about a photo shoot because if you're getting stressed your dog is going why are you stressed what's wrong what's happening i don't know I understand and then it just ramps everything up and they don't settle yeah absolutely and i suppose patience kind of goes for dog owners and dogs but equally for you what skills do you feel you've developed as a dog owner as a dog um, photographer you know, have you had to develop certain skills that you didn't have before like a hell of a lot of patience i imagine yeah, I mean, I do think patience is key um, to photographing dogs or any animal, really. I think before I did dogs, I mainly did like wildlife. So I'm quite used to like sitting in a hide and waiting for the animal to appear. I will do that on a shoot. And I, I get to talk to people, uh, which is a slight failing. Um, <laughs> but I will, I'll just sit there and I'll be like, your dog's going to move into the right position. And then like the owners tend to be like, what, do you want me to do something? Like, no, I'll be fine. Just wait. But I surprise us, it'll happen. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, patience is 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 key on both sides. You you can't be stressing and you can't stress out the dog. So you know they'll get it in their own time. They will absolutely suss it out. Yeah, and obviously, I suppose especially when you're doing, I suppose natural photo shoots are probably a little bit easier, but. Studio shoots are in themselves very odd because it's a new surrounding yeah. for a dog. They're more natural in the woodland. In a studio, there's a lot more going on. There's maybe props, there's lights, there's. It must be you know, easier for them to get used to all of that first and then have their photo taken. So I suppose that's where, like, trusting, just letting them explore and just come to terms with the setting first is probably quite useful. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's weird. I mean, the lights are flashing and they beep a bit and, and all that. It's just generally a very weird environment to be in. <laughs> so. so, would you, obviously, I know most people go, I just take my own photos. What What's the difference? Why should people book a professional dog photographer versus just saying, oh, we'll take our own? What's the What's the difference? What are the benefits from coming to a professional rather than doing it yourself? Um, I think the benefits are probably, particularly if you book somebody that specialises in dog talk, they're going to understand dogs. They're going to understand the best poses, the best positions. Um, phone, phone, I mean, the iPhone these days is amazing for the camera, um, but it still has its limitations and there's only so much you can do with it. Um, so there's definitely still a place for a proper camera. Um, and it's, you know, it's about capturing the special memories. 
Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with the everyday moments. So obviously, the everyday moments are really important. Um, but yeah, you know, capturing something really special. Nice with a pro- with a professional photographer. You know. So, do you have any? Obviously, you know, building onto you know, not everyone wants to have a professional photo shoot every six months. I would quite happily um, hundreds of dogs uh, photos, <laughs> but. Do you have any tips for people who are taking photos at home? How can they get a better general sort of everyday photo of their dog? You get a helper. <laughs> get somebody to yeah. sort out. If you're taking the photo, if you're getting the photo, get somebody else to sort the dog out because you cannot manage all situations at the same time. Um, and get down, get on the floor, get down to their level. The pictures are a lot better when you're shooting at the same level as them. I suppose, yeah, most of us would stand up, ask the dog to sit, and then you've got them looking up at you rather than the straight on. Yeah. And any particular phone that's better? Yeah. That's like I'm an Android person, I'm not an iPhone person. Is the iPhone better than an Android? Does it not matter? To be honest, these days I don't think it matters that much. I mean, I got an iPhone for the camera, quite frankly. That's why I have an iPhone. Um, it is... But, you know, I think these days with the technology, all the cameras are pretty good. Um, so, yeah. It's all the ca- case of buying things and the photographic techniques don't necessarily change when you're using a camera or an iPhone in terms of get to their level, watch your positioning, see what the light is like. This hasn't changed in like 150 years. <laughs> it's all the... Well, that's... It's- Good to know that there's things that aren't changing in the world. Um, but equally, and say it's, it's more about the, the skill of how to get the photo um, and knowing how to edit it as well. Yeah. So if people want to get in touch with you, um, how can they do that? Do you have um, a website, a Facebook, etc.? How's the best way for people to find out a little bit more about what you do and um, see examples of your work? Yeah, absolutely. I have a website, which is sandypounderphotography.co.uk. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Sandy Pounder Photography. Um, so, yeah, you will find me there. Fabulous. So, I will put a link to your contact details in the show notes so that anyone who's listening and wants to check you out can have a little look. Um, and I believe you have a link for top tips as well that we could link in the bottom so they get some top tips sent to them. Is that right? Yeah, I have an ebook. I have a couple, there's a general one and I've got a puppy one as well. So I will give you those links links as well. Excellent. So I'll pop those in the notes as well. It's been wonderful um, talking to you and hearing a little bit more about dog photography and all the different things um, it entails. Often a lot more than people imagine, I I feel. Um, Any parting words? I just had fun with it. That's that's what it's all about. Um, You know, a photo shoot should be a fun experience not something that you come out of and think oh god that was so stressful <laughs> it's all about having fun and capturing special moments so that's, Amazing. that's what it's all about brilliant um excellent i will look forward um to seeing your next photo shoot and what you get up to thank you so much for joining us thank you for listening to the dynamic dog owner with me debbie potter see you next time